What's going on guys here at 11 a great day today and today we are once again talking about a brand new Netflix anime series. This time it is indeed another video game adaptation but not of a fantasy series and it's instead of one of the most iconic fighting series of all time. Today we're talking about Tekken Bloodline. But before I get into my thoughts make sure to head on down to the comment section below I want to hear what you thought of this series. Are you a fan of the Tekken series? How do you think this compared as like an adaptation of the video games? Did deliver on the fan service you wanted, the story you wanted, and if you're not a fan of the Tekken franchise or you've never touched it before, what do you think of this as a series? Full disclosure, I have never played Tekken in my life. I've seen little bits of it here and there. I feel like most people are aware of certain character designs and just aware of the existence of the franchise, but aside from that, I don't know any sort of details, so I am looking at this as a standalone series. I am not looking at it in comparison to the games, how well it adapts the games. I am just looking at this as... An anime series and one that yeah I have mixed thoughts on. So I'll start off with some of the things I did indeed like. First up I think the fights in particular do feel very video game-esque which I really think they should. Now when it comes to like the starts of the fights they kind of announce the contestants, they announce when someone wins and just the fights generally yeah, it feels like something that would have been pulled out of an arcade video game. And my favourite thing about the series is the internal struggle of Jin, our main character. He's torn between two different fighting styles, having, you know, two different senseis, two different teachers within life, first off his mother, and now his grandfather. One being more pacifist with his mother, whereas, you know, a bit more heavily reliant on defence and, you know, only attacking and being violent towards people when it's absolutely necessary. But then when it comes to his grandfather's teachings, it's much more focused on aggression and violence. And you have, like, these two sides of this character where one side of his head is listening to what his mother's taught him, the other side is listening to what his grandfather's taught him. Now, moving back to the fight sequences, for the most part, they're decently well animated, but it's a series that is really mixed when it comes to... To its animation when it's the 2d stuff with like these thick black lines that really accentuate edges similar to i guess something like borderlands it looks fantastic and i wish it was always like that when it goes to the more 3d centric stuff where it's obviously character models on screen it's really noticeable and it's not always the most enjoyable thing to watch and sometimes that 3d animation can have a negative effect on the fight scenes but i do like when it goes for a bit more of a 2d angle with it or something that's like right in between where yeah it still looks 2d to some degree but you can tell there's like elements of 3d animation to it but when it comes to using like straight 3d character models that's where it's painfully obvious and it does look off Above all else, the biggest problem that this series has, much like a lot of Netflix anime series these days, is that it's too short. Once again, a six episode series, it's not enough, I'm sorry, but these six episode run times for series, they don't work. I kind of want to do a full video discussing the problem with Netflix anime with this six episode run time, but I'm going to save those really detailed thoughts for a more scripted video that I'll do in the future. But let's just say for now, this is not enough time to flesh out this series. There's time jumps within it, you know, to start off with, he's training over multiple years, which is mostly condensed down to montages. There are, you know, things that are a bit more fleshed out in places, but generally, you see a lot of montaging of him going from this skinny kid to this really buff guy. And you don't really get the in-between all that well. And then when it comes to the tournament, because you've had this rushed training, you then don't have the right amount of build-up to get to this tournament and then the actual tournament within there. Also, some decent fights, you just you don't get enough time spent doing it, which then brings us on to... The main storyline of the series, which once again, it sort of takes a back seat when it really should be at the forefront. And it does not get the right amount of dedication, the right amount of time to really flesh it out and make you actually care, like truly care about what this character is going through and what this character has been through. Now, the tournament stuff, I would say, starts around the episode three mark. And then you have maybe like three episodes right before the finale where that kind of goes in a little bit of a different direction. So you essentially have like three episodes of the tournament stuff, but you're introducing so many new like characters within there that hadn't been in episodes prior. And you're establishing these relationships that should have been established beforehand because they existed beforehand. For example, a couple of the competitors that come in actually went to school with Jin. We don't see any of that. We, we don't like establish this relationship which seems to have been pre-established. And once again, that's a problem with the short runtime 
you don't get to fill in those gaps and really flesh out some of the other aspects of Jin's life. Which brings us on to the end of the series, and I say end of the series, because yeah, it feels pretty final. It, it feels like this is just a six episode like event thing. It doesn't seem like he's going to get a season two, I could be wrong, but based on how it does end, and I'm not going to spoil it here for those that haven't seen it, it seems you know, somewhat conclusive, but also a little bit of an open-ended ending. Now, one thing I will say is that it takes a totally unexpected direction, which I really didn't expect it to go in. It kind of had two choices and it goes down the path that I didn't really think it would go down. And the reason I say that is not because it's a, a bad decision in concept. It's actually, you know, a pretty cool idea to have gone this way that they went. But I don't think it was given the right amount of time to really feel like the right decision. It wasn't set up in the right way for this character to go down this path. And once again, bringing in that short runtime, that is the main problem. So overall, I've got to be honest, Tekken Bloodline is not that great. It's got decent elements, it's got some pretty decent ideas. It's got an ending that could have hit if it was established far better than it was. It does manage to capture the feeling of a fighting game being adapted into an anime, and I've got to give it respect for that because it feels like one of the most video game-esque animes we've ever had. And I did like the internal struggle of the main character, Jin, but aside from that, like... This is a big letdown, this is a big disappointment, and could have been far, far better than it was. So with all that in mind, I'm going to give Tekken Bloodline a D. Before I get out of here though, I'd really appreciate if you could leave a like on this video. Also subscribe if you're a fan of anime and Japanese gaming. If you're excited for all the Netflix anime content we're going to continue to get in the rest of August and going into September, and even going into October and the end of the year, make sure you have that notification bell turned on because we're going to have plenty more reviews to come. Most importantly though, I want to hear what you thought of this series, so head on down to the comment section below. And if you're a fan of Tekken, I want to hear from you most of all because I'm interested to know how well it does adapt the franchise as a whole. If you've never played Tekken though, or you're just not a fan of the series, I'm still interested to know what you thought of this, because you know, as a non-fan myself, I'm always interested to hear differing opinions from the same type of people. As always, thank you so much for tuning to Home Chat today, and I'll see you all in the next video.